Thank you. Okay. We're recording. Um, I don't know if there's anything. The first item I have to have on the agenda, I think we should keep it on here until this is uh, resolved and uh, we have some clear direction. So, but apparently, I don't think anything has really transpired in the past. I didn't make it. The, there were two sessions, the 18th and the 30th. I mm -hmm. think there are going to be um, opportunities for the public to ask questions, weigh in. Mm -hmm. I didn't attend these first of all. Actually, how many did? <laughs> I, I was the first one. I was on the But we had the one the other night at the board meeting ahead of the board meeting. Okay, yeah. And we were able to attend that. Dave was there. Yeah, I was there. Um and he showed up. There were a couple people. There's maybe six or eight of us in total there in the audience. And uh one vocal woman. That yeah. one woman was pretty vocal about wanting to have it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and I mean, it was pretty um, elementary uh, presentation, just telling us basically that uh, they can only influence the power portion of the, the bill. They could uh, influence the delivery or the service portions of the bill. And... Uh, they don't even know if they can provide this yet cost effectively to the community. Or well, they got to get bids, I right. guess, to come. It's out for bid, right? Yeah. In, in the near future, they're going to get bids. And then after they get the bids, they'll know whether it's a worthwhile endeavor for us to consider. Basically, in summary, that and there's, there's, there's no negative. So yeah. that if you can opt out, if you're automatically opted in, you can only opt out. But the worst case scenario is your kilowatt hours, what it is you're paying right now. So, and if they default like they did in the city, it bumps back to the kilowatt hour that they were paying before. So it, it seems okay. People are afraid that it's gonna be the solar thing where all of a sudden they get this $25,000 bill and it's not gonna happen with it. That's that's what I, John, when you agree, they said, because yeah. I asked that question, they're like, no, that that won't, that's not gonna be the case. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. somebody there from? Um... Jewel? Jewel, yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah, I think she was from Jewel, the woman was, that yeah. presented. Um, yeah, she did a good job. And I, I echo what Dave said that it really appears like there's no risk to the consumer. No, right. No, it looks like there's very little bit, no downside risk, really. I mean, right. Worst case. Right. You, you, you yeah, can't yeah, the pain. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. They're probably more concerned about RG and he screwed it up something. Well, that's. <laughs> The, well, the, the program it, she was specific in that there's three parts of your bill, and if there are three parts, one is delivery, one is source. So they only affect source. Right. So that's it. So RGD doesn't have a piece of that. So yeah, uh, yet, right they, now they can't yeah. screw that up. Right, right. Well, I suppose they send the bill though. Well, RGD, RGD, RGD does. Yeah, yeah RGD. Does. Well, they're going to have a return it before. Yeah, yeah there is not a spring. I mean, I say you'll go for that. And the reality is that the our portion of the bill is really the smallest yeah. piece of the invoice that we get every month. Right. So you're not talking about a significant change no. to consumers. All jobs. the surcharges, yeah. all the everything. None of that in there. there. Yeah, so it's a two percent maybe is that. Yeah, I mean, it's two bucks literally. So yeah. So Sarah told us back in summer that the RFP goes out in March. It's due in April. Uh, they're going to have another public meeting in the summer, and I guess yeah. that meeting will have more information. Right. That's what, once you have the uh, results of the RFP, and they're hoping to go live in August. Mm -hmm. There's really not a whole lot uh, through mm -hmm. this program, and you know, for us, to, I mean, it's, it's uh, it very simple. You know, here's a provider who can save you a few bucks if you want to do it or not. Opt out if you don't. Right. I mean, it, it's very simplistic for us. I think so. I agree. It's. The, the only thing I think will come up against, as, you know, as elected officials is that, that little old ladies are going to have trouble opting out. I mean, I, I, I kind of got out. opting out because they're in. Yeah. And if they want to opt out, they have to go online. Didn't, well, I, online. she said that they could do with a telephone call, too. I'm not, I don't yeah. share that same enthusiasm, you know, when you yeah, get on those right. phone lines and it's 35 yeah. minutes later right. and you're, yeah. so that's, you know, that would be my only concern that we maybe provide some kind of service, <laughs> you know, help to help yeah. you get through it, you know, step-by-step, step, like a cheap sheet or something. I mean, yeah. you could even have a room together and yeah, have a, and a workshop, yeah, and workshop. Just opt out, opt out together. I don't know about you guys, I don't know how many of you remember the name Enron. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back around <laughs> 2000, that, that era. 
you know, this we're going to save you money. Yeah. I was my factory. I was using about a million and a half bucks a month worth of electricity. All the kilns that we were running, they're going to save me a ton of money. That's a nice Not a penny, no. <laughs> right before they went bankrupt, <laughs> two months. <laughs> I like to think I did something to affect that. <laughs> I just, you know, how do you, why would you, you got the product, why would you, I just don't understand how, why somebody in that business is going to say, yeah, I'll give you 10% off. Mm. Well, just of course, for, just for the hell of it. Jewel's yeah. making a piece of this somewhere. Sure, they're not, yeah. They don't tell you where, but no. they're making a piece oh. somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. not and not altruistic. Right. right. Yeah. All right. Well, we've, I spent more time in that than we really needed to. Oh, County Road 28 Sanitary Sewer. All right, who gets the report? Uh, why don't you give it to Jim? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to set down? I read through it online last night. Not all of it. All right. Not from like really bad. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, it's almost the report is. itself. I do. So, so the big takeaway is that um, these numbers are going to sound a little bit different, Jim, just because. I went through this again with, with Derek and caught a couple of typos that I had to correct. Um, we had the $750,000 in ARPA money. Our total estimated construction cost is about three contingencies, about you know, 450. Engineering legal admin, that's 750. So our total estimated project cost is like 4.2, um, almost 4.3. ARPA funds of 750 that just subtract from that, that we use like three and a half million roughly to finance. So we ran it at 5% for 30 years. And then we also did it at 5%, 3% just because I think originally when we um, had our information meeting, we talked about 2.75% or whatever, but obviously interest rates have been kind of rising. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, it's a crystal ball scenario. I figure we give a range and we'll just see, you know, where it falls because um I should, I should, you know, thank you. We, we wouldn't be financing this project probably like fine like long-term financing this project for at least a couple of years mm -hmm. and money be three years so who knows where the interest rates will be at that point in time um but so we have an annual cost at three percent of about 2100 a year and then an annual cost per unit of about you know just a little bit under 2600 per year at five percent so three percent is twenty-one and five percent is twenty-five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he had his, what if you put this table in it and he had the numbers all kind of goofy. That's when I texted you. I was like, oh, okay. So residents on on that would pay twenty six hundred dollars a year. So I mean just rough in a ballpark. Yeah. yeah. So um at at, a, at five percent, um, if someone their debt service would be about twenty two hundred a year, and then the O and M charge is 385 from the county so then mm -hmm. bumps you up to that like just under 2600 mm -hmm. at the at the high end so so it's just safe to tell people when they ask that question that this project is going to cost them mm -hmm. somewhere in that range yeah I, I just feel like you know we're in such a state of volatility between material costs labor costs you know all the interest rates it's mm -hmm. i think we should just show a range say it could be this it could be this well to that point if there is or not let me say it differently when there is development along County Road 28, does the incremental cost for each individual resident go down because there's more as, pain? As long as they're part of that district. So because it's it's a um it's by EDU. So mm -hmm. say someone comes in and builds a hundred EDU uh subdivision. I have 103 EDUs in here, I think. So that would then now the district would be 203 EDUs. Mm -hmm. So and, the and cost they, and then divided by two hundred versus yeah. the cost divided by one hundred. So that the principal and interest payment per year on debt service is two hundred twenty six thousand. So mm -hmm. that number just gets divided by two hundred. Right, you just get, the divisor is going to be different. Yeah. That's right. the only thing that the loan stays constant. So so that's a good thing. And that's a good thing. thing. That's something we can explain to uh, our constituents too. Is that you know so twenty six hundred mm -hmm. bucks now, but if we get the Development that we foresee along this route, those costs will go down incrementally. So, yeah, you put another hundred units on here, you're going to cut the debt service almost in half. Yeah. Well, yeah. having that available too encourages right. development. So yeah, exactly. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And the 395 is 
is a fee that everybody pays to the yeah. sewer. So well, three, yeah, three the actual five. cost of the, the construction is in the 2100, 2200. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, people will just know what they have to pay. You know well, they want to know what right. their yeah. annual bill is going to be. Yeah. The 395 is something you pay. You're paying regardless, right? Yeah. right. Well, I don't pay it. But this district is clear. It's different than like the water district <laughs> because like there's, you know, there's no uh, ad valorem charge, right? So mm -hmm. this one's just a great benefit basis. So to, it's really easy. You just take that P and I and divide right. by the number of EDUs. And you can, you know, um, as the town and um, probably even with the county, thing to do is, you know, make a note that reevaluate EDUs in your district, you know, once every five years or something like that. Because sometimes, you know, someone goes from a, a, a single family and they add an in law suite. So now they're two family, right? So their their EDUs would necessarily would potentially change. But if you're talking the hundred <clears throat> the hundred units, if it happens in year two, two good. I mean that really helps. Right. You. That year, yeah. It's, 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 three. It's, so here's yeah. Surrey. Yeah. In, <laughs> in year fifteen. Right. Yeah. So so um there are so there are financial strategies that you can do to hedge. Um, and uh, we can have uh, Donigan's group come in and kind of talk about that. But like sometimes I've seen this with some sewer districts, particularly where we know we're gonna, there is going to be development down the road. They uh, set up with like a, a you know a reduced P and I in the beginning, and then there's like balloon payments at the end. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. you know you take you, you maximize the people payment, right? Yeah. So a yeah. lot of times what people do when we do these issues, it's always level debt because it makes it easy, right? Because it's just P and I, same P and I the whole way through, right? But they can, through magic, they can shift like half of the interest towards the end. Towards the end. Yeah. So that that's a strategy. Um, the other thing too is like when someone comes in for a district, we can uh, assess them uh, a district fee, uh, so that they, they're paying an appropriate benefit from the original cost, yeah. right? So if this is uh, four point whatever or three three say say it's three million, right? And they come in with 100 EDUs. You could ask them for about a, a million and a half, to basically, because they would be half the EDUs mm -hmm. to pay for the, you know, the the, the principal. So that the affordable housing thing that's been a, kind of been approved is that going to be in the sewer district? No, no, yeah, this is I mean, this is just a, one yeah, one over. this would be a town sewer district run by the Ontario County um, sewer uh, mm -hmm. via uh, an intermunicipal agreement, right? No, that doesn't help. It's a uh, so all, all your sewer bills are coming from the right. Uh, what you will see here the debt service will be on your town taxes. Mm -hmm. Good. <clears throat> so, this is the report. There is a PDF. I think that's the UA and I'm going to I thought it would arrest you. Well, if, if you get through that, and I just go through it and just see if there's any revisions that um, anyone sees uh, a need for. If they can finalize that, I can stamp that, and then we can start talking about getting an informational meeting and taking those next steps. The, other, the only other thing is, you know, with that range on the, the interest rate percentages, I don't, you know, when we might want to have like some strategies of, you know, if we go to the informational meeting and tell them 2,600 at 5%, and then people are like, yeah, I don't want to do that. Maybe we can find some more ARPA dollars to, you know, help reduce that impact of the higher interest rate in that case. I don't know. Just a thought. I know there's been a lot of resistance to using any more than 750 for this project. So I wouldn't count on that. Well, I mean, certainly bring it up, you know. At some point, I think we now that we have this report, we should present this that great detail necessarily to the town board so they're all aware of it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe at our next meeting, uh, was it 27 I think. 27, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, if they could, yeah, if we can get that's fine. We can do that. But and then it sounds like we got to approve that as soon as possible so we can get a meeting on this so that the residents can. There's get. two steps. So yeah. you guys have to say yes. Yeah. And I need Ontario County to say yes. Yeah, but they're. <laughs> yes, we're not doing that in 27. No, no, no. No, no but we could. We could there, I don't think all the board members need to have the full report. You can send it by uh, it's a, email. It's, there's a link. But the report. Like it's yeah. in a Dropbox. Yeah. So just maybe you could provide the, the report itself with what, like 18, 19 pages. Mm -hmm. I think the, the core of the report uh, from yeah. our. But why not just email that PDF? Well, why? You know, they, they, they want to look at yeah, it. They look at I've it. Got, don't they don't. I've got a Dropbox link. So yeah, 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 it's going to get out everybody so they have it. Yeah. Most importantly, how do we expedite the informational meeting? 
so that we can get some feel from the well, residents whether they're comfortable or not comfortable with this. Well, we've kind of already really need to have started that already at one point, yeah. but we kind of need to touch base with them now that we have. Tell me what you mean. We started our, our data. data. Yeah, we had, we we had uh, an information on we've given yes. them numbers, so we're yeah. in it over yeah, two thousand dollars a, a year. And yeah. were people comfortable? They seem comfortable with it. Yeah. Yeah. were there around the, around yes. that two grand. I think uh, I think this works. You know, if you can stay, the closer you can stay to two grand, that works. But I think. You know, if we get north of say twenty five hundred bucks, I think it's going to be. Uh, I think it could get difficult. Does this yeah, have to four hundred dollars to pump out your septic tank? Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. subtract that <laughs> right away. You know what I mean? So and, and no, that's wet. That whole area is wet. So mm -hmm. you know, those those. I mean, the people that have spoken to me about are like, when is this project going to be? I'm like, right. I, you know, yeah, they're they're within right, a couple of years. Yeah, they want to know what's going. So we've, like I said, but we've talked with them, so they had they had some right. preliminary numbers. We've updated them. Obviously, interest rates changed, so some of the numbers are shifting up. And then um, you know, the other thing that to, to think about this whole process is that district is still going to have to go to the audit control. I was just going to ask that. They had to go through them, too. So there's a couple. Count the us, Count board, county, audit control. Yeah, audit control. And, that's, and then once it comes back from audit control, then the town board has another action. Because that's when you can adopt your final order. But you can still put it out for petition. Yeah. Well, we ought to act as a town board. We ought to get on this right away, don't, don't you think? I mean, I think well, all rolling. Let, let me just ask. I just heard you say the petition. Do we have to go to a vote for the residences no. in that area or anything? It's process? a petition. So um, so there's two ways to create a, a sewer district. Actually, there's two ways to create um, just about any uh, sewer district. The first method is by permissive referendum. So it's a town board resolution to create the district subject to permissive referendum there's a 30-day period if there's no challenge to that uh referendum then the challenge uh, legal challenge yeah if someone would circulate a, a petition and if you can get five percent of the voting pop and assessed value that would challenge that uh resolution and then it would go to a voter referendum where you'd actually have the vote right just vote like of the town or vote of that community vote of that district yes so, uh, so that would be a special voting, um, whatever event. Um, the second way is you take the, the report and then uh, it goes out with a legal petition. You get uh, greater than 50% of the voting pop and assessed value, and then you've cleared. And then, then it's just a matter of going to audit control. Once they clears there, then we can then move ahead. So the petition was, I see sewer districts generally always go by petition. Um, just because it's, they're always more costly, uh, so yeah, that's that's those are the two ways. So just so I understand, you go to petition for all the residences in that area, everyone in the district, the district yeah, boundary the district. Yeah, the district boundary, the map that's in there and identifies fifty percent of the assessed value, saying yes, fifty percent of the voting it. pop and the fifty percent of the yeah. It's, it's, there's two components to it. So it's basically a vote that we're going to yeah. in the district. But you do it by petition. Yeah. So, you know, the, the attorney, how do we get there and how quickly can we get there? The petition, it just, I mean, it's a lot of knocking on doors. So you got to ask, you got to have people come out and, and then, you know, keep knocking on doors, knocking on doors. If like the district is, uh, you know, totally a uh, slam dunk, you, everyone signs on and it goes really quick. If not, if it's not, then it can take a while to get those signatures. So um there were people at that informational meeting that volunteered to uh, there's a couple people. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple yeah, yeah, for sure. So so where did you hold the informational meeting? At Tom Hall. Yeah. Yeah. So we can do the same thing if petition signing, right? You sign that out, come sign the petition. Is that how you yeah. do it? And then yeah. if you get enough, you don't knock on doors. Yeah, sometimes we can have the you know, we can have a petition ready at the informational meeting. You can always do that as well. Yeah. But then you have people sign right there. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't. I mean, we it wasn't 100 percent turnout at that meeting. We only had 15. 18 yeah, there's like a yeah, there's 100 EDUs, and yeah, we probably had just under 20. Yeah, right. But the people that were there were all in favor of it, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't say that people weren't there, weren't in favor of it. They just didn't come to the meeting, right? Because I mean, it was a very preliminary meeting, just right. to gauge if it was in the two thousand dollar area, people still interested. Yeah, yeah. We so we need 90 signatures somewhere. If it's fifty percent of a uh, one eighty, yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever. So I mean, if there's hundred and three EDUs, we need like you know fifty 
for EDUs, you know, if it's right. EDUs, whatever. Yeah. No. Yeah. Just to use the same number, but yeah, it's it's basically, but it's the assessment and the right. voting power. Right. Is the trailer park in this district? Uh, I no, they are not. Are you talking about Goodman's? You're talking about McWilliams Old Trailer Park. Okay, so yeah. Goodman's, yeah. Okay. There I have sewer. Okay, good. Yep. Yeah. Because uh, I'm just thinking it'd be tough to get the trailer park for people to vote in favor of this. No, they haven't. Right. Okay, good. Well, maybe on the 27th, we can ask to have this put on the agenda ahead of time. Yeah. Maybe you could give this kind of presentation, you know, just outline what you just did mm -hmm. in terms of process, steps that we have to follow. You know, town board can review it, send this mm -hmm. out ahead of time, make a decision. Yeah. I think it's soon about, I mean, let's get it's our, let's get our end role. So yeah. Yeah. we do because that, so that, that guys... it's got to be spent sometime soon. <laughs> You guys read the report. Let me know if there's anything that needs to change. Yeah. There's, if there's anything, I want to change it before I send it to the county. If there's you know something grammatical. Can you send it to the link for that? Yeah. Would yeah, the link I, I be this with the same yeah. thing? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, I'll just, I'll yeah it's, all, it's a PDF. It's all compiled. I'll just read it. Yeah. I see your growth factor for 2050 is 50 units. It's from one yeah. to 150. I mean, it's, that's based off the population projections. Yeah. I mean, you know, we have to use some data set. So, you go to like the uh, Genesee Finger Lakes Regional Planning Council and they have like the long range projections. So it's just one of those, you know, don't, no, no, I hear don't, you saying. Don't cling to that, but it's show that. And then on the other hand, say, well, if we got a yeah, development of 100 units, mm -hmm. but you're not showing in the report. So, right. Either well, way. I, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't want to make those projections. No, that's, that's, that's a, that's a whole of the dice. Yeah. 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 This is what's here now, right? So let's let's stick with that. So that's uh, Conroe Twenty Eight Sewer in a nutshell. Um, we do have to move ahead with the um, flow study, right? So hopefully that. Where um, is that right now? Where is the? So the county is going to install the meter for us, and they're going to provide MRB the data. We just need to write the, the report and uh, do the modeling. Modeling, so I'm just waiting for them to get the data. Do you know when they're going to install it? They would have to do the um, the flow monitoring is from March to May. Mm -hmm. That's their rules. Okay. <clears throat> Rainy season. Yeah, they want to mm -hmm. capture the wet weather. Yeah, in which case, could be the last couple of weeks. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> wow, it was pretty wet the other day. So. Um, mm -hmm. All right, I think I'm done on County Road 28. All right. Do we uh, the Virginia Senate? Any other questions? Oh, nice job. Keep it on sewer. We're going to run to the next sewer. Veterans Administration. I didn't bring any hands out handouts for the VA sewer updates, but you had I mean, some conversations. So. Yeah, we had conversations, but it, it's a challenge to talk to. Federal government. <laughs> uh, Anything. Well, <laughs> we might have talk. like a short here, so when that starts, when that quits working, you know uh, what I mean? That's hard. The, the issue we had a we had a, a Zoom call with these guys, and you know they wanted to introduce us to their A and E firm, and. Yeah. yeah, I was. was like, it was one of those. I was like, I was like, I don't know how these guys are and they're doing this work. They just did not seem to know their way around, you know, this work. <laughs> like the guy said, isn't it a book written? We don't do it any other way, right? No, like, there, that doesn't really work. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bunch of West Point grads yeah. that are easy, that easy. Created, created <laughs> Well, I know, but I'm mean, like, you know, they clearly have they clearly have the military like yeah. Uh, yeah. philosophy. Um, but I'm like, I you know, I just don't know if they know what they're getting into. <laughs> yeah, because like <clears throat> BA people would ask the West Point people, they're like West Point, the West Point engineers. engineers. Like, just yeah. uh, one didn't know what the other, and then he's trying to explain to us what the government's trying to do. And they're like and the, the West Point guy says, like, "We'll just build the the um the pump station to your standards." Yeah, at the end, and we're like, "It's not our standards." <laughs> and then, I'm like, yeah, "We don't have it. We, you know, but we don't have the sewer standards because we don't have right. sewer districts per yeah. se." Yeah. That first meeting we had here last was the last summer. Yeah, it was a while ago. That was just 
That was that with was just, just the V8 people. Right. right. So now they're introducing who's this low bidder and people that are going yeah. to play. They're basically trying to get something in because they've asked, we've told them what we want for survey and we've asked them, we've told them what we like, would expect to how to get to us. But now they're talking about replacing the pipe from the VA all the way down. That's a, then, I don't understand. They, which I didn't know. They got an outfall that runs all the way down there. I'm like, you guys don't need to put a new sewer all the way across. It's like, so no, we're going to do new. I'm like, yeah. they get paid to do that, right? So they worried about capacity. I mean, they're building a lot of buildings there. They gave us a two hundred fifty thousand a day. No, it's two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Which I was trying to describe these guys because they were asking questions, and I'm like, our flow is going to be inconsequential to your flow, right? I'm like, you know, full build out of, of the of the sewer district, which isn't going to really be possible based on where we're going to put the pump station, um, was like thirty thousand gallons a day, and they're two hundred thousand gallons a day. And so I'm like, we're probably going to be closer to like twenty. So it's you know, it's tenfold factor. Mm -hmm. So all the infrastructure we put in is really going to be more based off of the VA's needs and less mm -hmm. about us. We just need them to set the pump station low enough and give us manholes to connect into so we can run our sewers. So, I think we can coordinate that effort, but like I said, I just think the people that we're working with are a little suspect. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, they had a lot of questions. So, like, when you, so anyway, so long and short of it is, is that they want to move forward. Okay, now we need to have a conversation with the county and the city. Mm -hmm. That's what we, we need to go back we, to this information. The biggest thing is that we need to make sure there's design standards that are communicated to West Point. I don't want to be responsible for communicating the, the design standards because it's it's technically not being designed to our standards. Right. It's not getting designed to the city standards. I think it's the county standards. Right. But I think you got to get everyone around the table so we can talk this out so everyone understands like so there's critical about. issues that you need Jim it's got to be low enough manhole covers for us to work with right? correct so well, let sure them build whatever they want right I mean what does it, what does it matter well, no, it, because um their force main connections got to go a certain route the way it was originally uh set up that force main was going to go in parallel with the gravity sewer that comes down from Grandview Park mm -hmm. So there's a railroad crossing. There's there's logistics. Uh, oh, yeah, to, to, I remember to, you saying this the last. Yeah, time. it's it, it's just uh, there's a lot of things to kind of do. But you know, understanding what the VA and the VAs can solve in that A&E from what they need to build. Because I was trying to describe it with you guys. Got to build the pump station. Then you got you have to build the force main going all the way over to connect. Yeah. So is this running across? So in down the town, town property both. It, well, eventually yeah it has to yeah, some part of it. yeah because yeah. we, we have to get into the city up on east yeah. yeah and that's another reason why we wanted to talk with the um the cities because originally the connection the connection point that we're targeting it was based off of the information i had for the county road four sewer district county road four 21 whatever so right. with that thirty thousand gallons a day well now it's two hundred thousand. well 230 say 250 total right. thousand gallons a day. I don't know if we're tying to the right location. This is going to be like an eight-inch force main. You usually don't tie an eight-inch force main into an eight-inch gravity main. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there, there's there's things that kind of work around, but like, like I said, the best thing is to probably try to get a kickoff meeting with, with stakeholders. Should, should they be taking the lead here? Um, we're 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 getting something for kind of nothing. So I think yeah. I'm okay with us taking the lead to try to help facilitate it because it needs to happen in a certain pattern for it to work for us. So Grand, Grandview Park is the area that would wind up getting served that area up in the we could serve them. That's the bedrocks. So that's the bedrock, yeah. but they're also north of the tracks. So the sewer on County Road 4, though, would be deep enough because it can drain down the hill. So you know, depending upon what if they give us the pump station, the forest main, you know, we have to look at what's affordable for the residents. Oh, that's good. Through, yeah, oh, yeah, through that on County Road Four, and then also look at County Road Four plus Grandview. You know, you, you look at yeah. you know those scenarios to kind of figure out what that needs to be. So, so then, that, shouldn't they present a design to the pump station all the way through the pump station, and then we go and review the design to see if it meets our needs to satisfy our requirements um yeah you're close it's um i think it has to there's a handshake that has to happen because where their force main is going to go will, will potentially impact our gravity route and, and i that needs to be coordinated because if we're close you know our sewer has to be in 
you'd want to put us in first, right? Before mm -hmm. the lower line, if they're the force main. So that and part has to and be. And we have to cross the tracks too. We would have to cross, yeah. we would have to come down right. Right. from Grandview right. to cross the tracks mm -hmm. to, to tie into our And that's the expense. That's, that's one of the, that's probably, the, that would be probably one of the most expensive parts of, yeah. of the, the sewer district. If, you know, like I said, you could phase that, do County Road 4, look at County Road 4 only, and then you could also look at County Road 4 plus Grandview mm -hmm. and then figure out what those EDU costs are. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's going to come down to the same thing, right? Maybe not, probably not as high as this because I don't think the people that are going to do 2,000, but if we can get this thing, you know, under uh, control threshold, um, you know, like in that 900 range, maybe. What did we have it at for Grandview Park originally? Wasn't it the, like, ball <laughs> oh, yeah. hundred dollars Yeah. Yeah. So they well, walked at that. Grandview Park, there were three areas that were cited in the store study yeah. that was done in 2016. <laughs> Treasure, Grandview Park, and County Road 28. Struck out with Treasure, they couldn't afford it. Sorry. Grandview Park, we went there next. Greg put together some very preliminary numbers, talked to other people. Didn't want anything to do with it. We did that one by survey. Uh, that right, we did. So yeah. I sent out a survey. And they said, no, we just can't afford it. So and now, in theory, we'll be going back to them with a lesser cost. Well, hopefully. I mean, that, you yeah. don't know. You got to work with the numbers. But I mean, if the, v, if, if the VA is eating the cost of the pump station, that's probably, you know, $400,000. And then the force main. And so, you know, that could be another, you know, half a million there. So, I mean, that's huge chunks of it would come out. So, yeah. Then, right. Where would it leave us, though, if the Grandview Park residents say, we don't want any part of this? Where's it leave? Well, if County, if County, County Road 4 people are into it, then we could still do County Road 4. Right. And that would be deep enough so that someday, you know, whatever, maybe another ARPA pie in the sky money pile not really in their hands you might be able to throw money and get the sewer up to grandview so is there any development opportunity in any of this district because that that would dramatically change the possibly on county road four they're, seeing, not sure. Not sure. Not sure. they're really they're like bowling yeah yeah, yeah they're long well, yeah. The grandview park there is, I mean, right right, right. So grandview grandview is done. Four, the only place is where the, the best places for development are about 21 yes but there's no sewer. there's no sewer there right and if Blue Boy sees us, he'll kill me because we're still not serving Blue Boy. <laughs> I feel bad, man. But it's like he's wanted sewer so bad for so long. Is he the guy that comes to the meeting every time? No, no that's a different guy. And Blue Boy was like the um, you know the BW commissioner BW. for the city. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 What? Uh, so it's this group though that uh, you were just introduced to, the A and E company. Is your name really West Point? Yes, yeah, West Point yeah, Engineers. Point. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a denigrating, yeah. great institution, you know. Yeah. But are, do you have any confidence in their ability to well, pull out the polis? I that's why I feel like I think I'm going to have to help them a little I, bit. Well, <laughs> when people talk to us that we are stand better than the people of the VA, right? Okay, that's the people of the VA just don't. They should just. They should just. More or less stay out of it. Let West Point work with the agencies here, or be led by and just right. say, "Look, here's the cost." Yes, put it in. Right. I mean, they're going to run out. I mean, it's theirs is going to stop working, right? Right. right. Yeah. So they they must feel some sense of urgency to get the yeah, ball Yeah, I think they do, um, but yeah. I don't know if they have a sunset. I was going to say, I'm like, I mean, this is a VA. I'm like, I don't expect this to be a rapid thing. Yeah. <laughs> What's the next step then? I mean, pulling together some group to, to oh, I make sure everybody's have, on the same page. Yeah, and we the, get the county and the city yeah. the town together and have a conversation with the West Point engineering. Because I've talked, I've talked with the Tim McGelgit on the side, you know, and I've talked um, with uh, Sprague on the side. So you know, it's, but I just we need to. Everyone needs to be in the same room, so we kind of talk it out. Because I want to make together. sure I want to make we could do that at, at this uh, meeting or right after this meeting. Or, yeah. Well, not today. No, no, I'm just yeah. saying, like after we could just schedule it after this meeting or yeah. something. You know, next yeah. month. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, Good to go. Fine. I mean, it sounds like the elements are there, but the you know, to pull that together is going to take. So I, I already had our like part. a preliminary design for the whole sewer, but it's it's got to get revised because the pump station locations right. changed. And like I said, I, we have to coordinate the force that they're going to put in with, you know, our potential gravity sort. Right. 
Are these people on site here at all? Is West Point group? Or no, they know? were assuming, yeah, they were somewhere. I don't know where they were assuming from. So, okay, but they had really nice stats. Yes. And nice stats. We could get them up on the screen so that they could participate. And yes, and be able to over here. No, we zoom with them also. Okay. Yeah. But with, I mean, the guys who were here last summer, are they the same people? No, different people now. Oh, really? oh. So, the things that, the, the, the one thing that kind of like has to kind of get worked through, at least at some point, is if the VA goes through the county, then to the city, you know, I think the VA either has to understand they either need an IMA with the county to get to the city or because um, they don't want to have ownership of the pump station or the force. They want to build it and be like, okay, it's somebody else's, right? Mm -hmm. So there, there's some logistics to work out from that avenue. Um, uh, it's going to be interesting. And yeah, when that, like, does, does the VA pay? Do you take the 200,000 gallons and break it down to EDUs? And are they paying 385 times that number? I don't, does the VA know that that's a possibility? <laughs> Because that's probably a, a fairly large number annually. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, well, you, you, you're volunteering to try to pull this together. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe yeah, at our right. next meeting here. Yeah. We could have that be. Is that resurrected the file? Like, a, a, you know, you might want to, well, maybe use town hall, maybe be a little more room there for us all. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Because. I know we'd be here, but probably that say BA, county, city, us. Plus two screens, I think, put up whatever they need to put up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, I'm sure we'd be through it. All right, so. Be the same day, same day. Mm -hmm. Right, just right. have a location, that's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> I didn't have to put a date out for this meeting. It's uh, March, 10th, 10th, March, March 10th, 10th, 3 10. Yeah. <clears throat> 10 a.m. as well. Yes. Yeah. All right. Electro scan. Electro scan. scan. And then Greg and Derek and myself got busy with Paul, who is going to be on site. We've done a site visit of the locations that we have can use to flow water without flooding out people's homes or ditches because we have to run water to pull the instrument down the water main. Uh, learn a little more about how deep we have to go. So this size hole we have to open up to put this equipment in about 10 feet long, five feet wide by extra the hydrant. So I wasn't aware of that, but I am now. Yeah, and, so that's, uh, a that's that's we, he was here or he, he came. Oh, he did. Well, he came for a tech, for a visit to okay. see what we look the right. areas that he took notes, photos, those those types of things to get an idea of what has been done while this year. I don't know. If you guys are not up to speed. Oh, like, okay. yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. You go through. That I think first. I remember this. This is where yeah. they're going to come in with a. Uh, they got a probe, a probe yeah. with a yeah. camera on it, and they can go and re, uh, tell us where bad sections of pipe are. Yeah, so right. that we it, can it uses minimize uh, the effort to repair the bad pipe by just focusing on the areas that were identified as needing work. Right. So it's, it, it uses a current, mm -hmm. pass the current through the wall, and where the current goes quickly, that's a bad spot. Thin wall. Right? Yeah. Right. Right. So you'll get kind of that, that right. kind of analysis plus a video analysis. Um, and I, I think there was also um, a Doppler or something. So just the whole that. water system or just no, the spots? No, no just, just kind of any of the parts that are These guys are pretty expensive the, on, the, yeah. on the daily. So yeah. we had to kind of just target certain areas. Yeah. Right. That pipe has a tendency to, over time in the ground, depending on the pH of the soil, uh, it, it get Kind of punky, it gets kind of uh, right. jelly like yeah. on the outside, yeah. degrades from the outside in rather than inside out. So these guys have come up with a way to it's, it's, find, you know, looking at current leakage flow, those areas that, that might be weak mm -hmm. could fail. The pipe future. material is asbestos cement. Asbestos. Cement. That's that's the problem. Is like yeah. there's not a lot. If it was ductile, if it was PVC, yeah. if it was 
cast iron, we would have ways to test it. Like this, we he did a lot of research to figure out how to. We just want to know how long or if there, what kind of life is potentially left on this pipeline. Um, you know, and then obviously if we you know get this data, you know, we want to take that data and then turn it into an engineering report and go apply for funds. So when you repair the pipe, Jim, do you do it with ACM also? No. No, we use PVC to replace it with repair clamps on okay. the brakes. So we have how many miles of ACP pipe do we have? Oh, let's say 50. Yeah. A lot of it in the ground, a lot of it's been in the ground for so decades. 67, 58, 69. You know. Pass the lifespan of the pipe. I mean, well, yeah, I don't, you don't know. I mean, like, yeah, yeah exactly. that's it's oil because yeah, the, yeah Chuck's been back in the day. They thought it was going to last for right? right. right. Oh, yeah, no, nope. well, even then, I you don't know. I mean, I think some people put the well, it, there's places in the city of Rochester still have wood water main, right? So, yeah. you know, it, like the it, city of Canada, it, goes. <laughs> right? You know, I, the, um, people use different pipe materials, or whatever, but uh, generally speaking, most life expectancy of the pipe is in that 50 to 75 year range. But, like, depending upon the environmental conditions, the aggressiveness of your water, so you can get. You know, longer, shorter time frames. It's all various. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it has to soil. Yeah, each right in there. We're we're testing south end down near Terry's because we know that's an area that the extra is you soft. can't do wear thin. Yeah, it's, you know, you, it's soft when you go and work on it. Mm -hmm. We're also doing the north of the town. We're trying to see where we're at. Mm -hmm. like, Doing four locations for two south, two north. And, and if it's successful, you'll expand the program probably for the most part. Yeah, yeah, I have to board a funds. I mean, it's like yeah. I said, it's about it's really expensive. 25000 yeah. a day. So it's not cheap. But we, we might get three days. We might get enough information yeah. off of this just to go ahead and make some general right. generalizations on the rest of the land. At the end of the day, we know that like we, we've got to replace some of this water main, anyways, um, just because uh, it's. At a higher pressure than what the actual pressure rate uh, right, of the pipe. Right, yeah. That's that's a condition we have to kind of deal with uh, all on its own. And then um, the other part is just asbestos pipe has a lot of special requirements. We need to work around it. So mm -hmm. you know, if we can get away from that stuff, that makes things a lot safer for the employees. It's overall, it's a good pipe. It's just hard to test mm -hmm. as far as like. Their early on testing was like you had to take a piece out, send it to a lab. They would. Just test Give you a piece. Yeah. yeah. They had no idea. You had a mile of this. Yeah. Like, really where it's this, bad. this point could be bad. This right. point could be good. Right. You sample here. And, you know, it's just. You know, and we can then, the, you know, the town can then take this data and say, okay, you can start <laughs> creating a capital fund for replacing that small mm -hmm. water main and go from there. Right. Okay. So. One of those things, you know, 50 years ago, this will last forever. Yeah. It's made of asbestos right the now. Last yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, I mean, we find, well, let's see number six here. Yeah. We're right. talking about the same problem, you know, that this deterioration of infrastructure over time, you know, you got to replace them. And uh, it's a whole lot more expensive now to replace this stuff than it was back in those days as a percentage of, you know, overall budget, things like that. So. But at the end, this, they could give you a complete report of everything they've done a study they spell all out for us it's fairly new technology it's not been around all that long i mean not all right and other right so techniques if, if you get the report find out there's a hundred yards of pipe that's thin walled or whatever the digit, you would act on that then you would say i'm we're going to put that on the, the thing to be replaced because it's potentially we don't want to do it in january <clears throat> 10 below zero okay correct but right you know, so do about 45 to 3500 feet shot is what we're trying to do each location mm -hmm. depending on bends, bells, those types of things. Mm -hmm. So it's you know we're getting some good legs to try to get a, a best idea for us. But yes, that will say okay, we have the information now. We have the data now we're gonna act on it. Now we're gonna take the information and start yeah finding ways to fund it, it to yeah. replace it for or start with that you know a capital project to start replacing you do yeah good wow, those are things and you know it's not only the pipe you know like the valves that are in the ground are 50 years old so you take it for a spring more 
they don't operate like they once did. They the don't steel all valves, they, you know, they the bolts on them are, you know, they're not stainless steel. So yeah. like That's now, right. not all the valves they get, they're all, you know, all, every bolt is stainless steel. Yeah. So there's 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 other things they're called quick tips. I have on my office. Mm -hmm. It's they used to thread down, cut in the asbestos, back it out. Well, those were held on my steel bands. They they pop because of soil conditions. Yeah. Just rot out. Yeah. So it's not, you know, those are things that we deal with, like uh One not row is a hot spot. Middle Cheshire Road's hot, Westlake Road's hot. <clears throat> the north end, not so much, but the south end seems to have more of a acidic soil than yeah. the north end. So the goal point is to get good information from this. If the, they use it to well, they use it a lot out west to find leaks because they're very obviously don't want those any water. Any right. water. Right. So what are we going to do this? Uh, he should for some time March. I guess I don't have an exact date yet, but because I think he's in Australia right now. So no. yeah. Oh yeah, we're looking at some time in March. And you said four spots? Yeah, there's uh, Cairo 16, between Foster and Wells Curtis. And then we have Bill Cheshire between Johnson and Wells Curtis. Then we're on Cooley Road, one between Short and 30. Mm -hmm. Four spot. Why can't I do that? Oh, Bristol Road. Bristol Road, sorry. Bristol Road that uh, comes down towards the city. Oh, okay. And, yep. I got bad plates on my way. Your plates are old on that way. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it. <laughs> Should be another bellboy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been here a month and I'm already fixing my water. <laughs> we try, we try. <laughs> All right, so I think this is on here um, mostly because, um, you know, from our original proposal, I'm just trying to wrap up all my deliverables to the, to the town. Um, so there's like a, a, a cheat set here with a uh, plan view, and then you have elevation views of building one, building two, um, uh, floor layouts uh, of building one and building two, uh, some uh, elevation views just to kind of give people kind of a rough idea of what, what it's supposed to be up like. Um, the action that are in front of the town board, I think, uh, will be coming up is just completely seeker. Hey, so the reason why, you know, one, you only put seeker as part of the, at this point in the proposals, when I wanted to get it out of the way. And then also, you know, a lot of the funding agencies, if there's, is, if there is any grants that could help us with this, you have to have your seeker done anyways. So, that's what's in front of you guys to, to move ahead with the seeker. I just want to also make it aware that everybody's that if the complete seeker it does not commit the board to actually doing this, it just means that you've cleared the environmental hurdles in case you want to do this. Well, well I, I, that. I'm not speaking for the whole board, but I think this is bubbled up to the board. When you say from that last meeting, transfer station, they want, I mean, it feels like we want something ready to go in case right. that shuts down. So right. we, we need to have I, I teams crossed. I wanted to explore that a little bit, Dave, because. I think, yes, what you're saying is true, but I guess I want to explore, is this an immediate need or is this a need that we're going to need five years from now or two years from now or 10 years from now? I mean, help me understand that a little bit. Is it 28? Look, what is that? What, well, theoretically, when could the, the trend to 28? 28, 28, 28, so. Yes. But I don't know, this wasn't really tied to that. The, the, I mean, no. the, the impetus of this was, um, our existing facility is completely inefficient. It's in the way of the highway. Um, it's not safe. And we're just trying to clean up. And so let me tell you what I felt that Tom Ward was saying. If if that if that uh, dump closes, we need different uh, trailers and stuff in here. So that's however my, we that's my point. And how I, yeah. I don't I don't know if the town board understands. Whether this is a need or a want, and I think that's what I want to explore. So, please go on. So, the answer of this, this was just the effectiveness of our site. Yeah, it, like, well, the American. flow. Well, it's a they bunch of things. Yeah, we separate. Covers. 
um, we're not collecting the leachate properly that that comes out. I mean, yes, it gets to the pond, but it's not getting to the pond sometimes. The efficiencies, uh, the expansion that has been talked about with the city of Canada. Well, I'm sure about that. that. Well, they would like to have more use of it up here, basically rent the area. Will they? They want to, but they, they pay us down. They pay. They the problem, the they problem. have to move them up right now. And they, right. Has, uh, they provide people to operate solely under our supervision, but they're limited in what they can do. They can, they can only bring in uh, the large items. The, uh, because of our facility, right? right? Well, because we don't want to take their this will sell the waste because then the how do you separate it unless you yeah. pay you know you pay your throw. Mm -hmm. right. So they bring C D scrap metal and what costs. Would this upgrade to our transfer station allow them to increase their usage and increase the fees that they pay? It can increase the usage yeah. because now yeah. this is not what we're yeah. operating here at the highway facility. That's, that's a part of the problem. They want to come when we are working. I'm yeah. like, no, you're not. We're not going to deal with that while we're working here. I go, this is. We have not had any more discussion with them. As Jim says, they would like greater access, but so far the town is not. We haven't gone to them and said, let's sit down and talk about it. One of the things that, that may probably will come at some point in time. Pay as you throw that for three residents as well like, as the city. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, we're being the county is pushing that. Right. I mean, they're pushing pay as you throw. Some municipalities around here already have a franchise we done. The reality is it pay 15, 16 cents a pound for each bag. A facility like this, the structures that Greg has designed here initially would not have scales in them, but there would be space provided. For scales to be added. Yeah, there's a depth point from time. where the dry lanes are Hard and where system. the um, compactors are. Yeah, I had a conversation with this with Alfred Brady that we're not talking about that. So. Yeah. The, the, the 2028 thing is, you know, they that's when the deal with Costello runs out. Right. And everybody's looking at that as that'll be the final date. Nothing will happen out there after 2028. We've all heard stories that that. May or may not be true. There are there is land out there further south could be developed. The deal that the county had with Casella when they when they, they, they formed this thing for Casella to operate it, Casella said, "You give us the ability to bring in uh, materials from outside the county up to a certain. I don't know what the numbers are. I can't quote them off my time of my head right now." If you allow us to bring other materials in there, we will grandfather this site, you know, right back to day one. So in the future, if anything happens there, then uh, not on the county. The, the deal is structured in such a way that after 2028, we go our separate ways. If the county decides there is more land here, we could open this up for, let's say, this county resident. Try to operate that without Casella, it deals off the table. Right. County, when they started that facility out there, did not bury things the way that they should. Right. So there are problems out there, potential problems. There are problems there, but the potential exists that, you know, Sky's government the agent could function. say, gee, we're putting this limit on it now. Oh, you fail. You got to go in there and dig everything up and fix it. Well, if you, you stick with Casella, then then the county could strike a deal with Casella and say, okay, we want to open this up for just Ontario County residents going forward after 2028. You guys manage it for us, okay? Charge you this much. And that's a possibility, but so far, the county hasn't made any decision or a supervisor's commission to study. What was it, two years ago? No. It was a 72 page report, I remember. They came out and they, the county wanted to create this hub and spokes uh, system where <laughs> different uh, sites like ours here would you know, be hubs and you bring different materials in. And the existing sites in some of the uh, villages and municipalities around the, the, the county, 
didn't yeah. like the idea. Well, we're going to be giving up uh, green brushing here. You got to haul your brush you can a day, but you got to haul uh, municipal solid waste to Bloomfield. You got to... so the study was just pretty much put on the shelf and you know for that. So just exactly what the county's position is, I don't know. I mean, we have a director of sustainability, uh, Carla Jordan. Um, Caitlin uh, Kumsky used to work here with Jim, went joined that group about a year, just about a year ago now. And she's involved in that. And we talked to her periodically and asked her what's going on. And there's not a whole lot going on. The county hasn't really focused, you know, and chosen the direction to go. So we put this together. We've, we've accrued money. We have over $800,000 set aside for this project, which would pay for a big chunk of it, I would think. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the, the whole idea is to have it ready to go. You know, we've identified it as one of our strategic concerns mm -hmm. for this year. Right. And uh, to have it on the shelf ready to go. When you pull the trigger, you know, maybe we never pull the trigger. I mean, that's, you it know. It sounds like some of it could be dependent upon the deal that is reached to after 2028, right? A lot of fit the needs after 2028. Yeah. But I think part of it I, that I wasn't under, understanding is that there's, is there a potential for income if we change to this from the city? Because we're not getting any more revenue from the city because it's, they get in the way of our operation. Of course. I mean, we only run about, you guys know, three, right. three four hour shifts right. a, a right. week. We surveyed Caitlin when she was still here, went out, looked all around the county, looked at what others do. Victor has a, a nice facility, drive through facility similar to this. Yeah, you building know, one is kind of a little bit based off of Victor's. Yeah. But they, <clears throat> and they, they have a, you know, pay as you throw system. And we went up and watched that operation for been a couple of times for a few hours. Worked very efficiently, very well run and all. All the things, all the the, the, the uh, reasons for pushing forward on this that these two guys cited, uh, you know, big one is separating this operation from the highway operation in the safety aspect. Nobody's been killed at this period. Right. We have had a few people. But that is a miracle. There are, yeah. things, I there are a number of near misses. <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. But one of the, the big things at some point in time, you know, right now we pay for this facility through our tax of the property tax. And, you know, a lot of people, uh, we end up with about 2,500 of the yeah, the, uh, 22, tax, 2, 000, something like that. But the population of the town is around 11,000. I can't remember how many households we have. I don't know, it's around 5,000, something like that. So only in, in those 25, uh, uh, had permits that we hand out. Like I have one for my truck, one for my car, so my house has two. So a lot of people do that. So we probably are looking at maybe 1,700 of our households out of maybe 5,000 to 6,000. So maybe a third are using it. Others are using private service to come pick up your house. And, you know, those people are paying their property taxes too. They're paying for this facility, but they're not necessarily using it. But they people, could. They could. could. They could. could. You know, it, it's I'm always work. surprised, including myself, the people that go there. I mean, there's guys making a million dollars a year. It's really garbage. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I, I, so, you know, at some point, I don't like the idea. I've always been both to patients for I just all my life. But, you know, I think we close the loop on a lot of these guys that come in that have more oh. stuff. But the pay as you throw is the real lever yeah. towards waste reduction. That's right, true. right. That's and that's that's well, the city's that. essentially gone to pay as you throw because they've got that toter system now. Okay. So that that's what it is. So I have to run as a city as a 12 inch warning right now, Wesley Road. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. Speaking yeah. of especially to um my guy on those terms, uh yeah. bells, so we can back the residents. Okay. So that's what well, there's only two more topics. Yes. Um, you know, um, yeah. Pretty freely. Yeah. I just had um, for a question, maybe. Um, that 
I think involves Jim. Okay. At our strategic planning, we identified infrastructure as being one of our goals mm -hmm. that we have to work on. That being said, how do we get to the point where we start prioritizing some of the sidewalks, some of the roads, et cetera? And I know you and I have had a conversation where you say you need $13.5 million over the next five years. Right. It, is there some way that we can go and put in black and white a list and kind of put a priority on them and kind of identify a budget um, with them? I think you're going to need to separate your sidewalk walking path from roads. I think yes. that might be. Yes. Because I think you uh, use North Road, for example, like we've been waiting many years for, you know, can't have a farm tour thanks to water. And we purposely have not done anything to that road because we want them to do it. I'm hoping to get done this year that we can then look at doing those types of things to the road. Um, maybe do the road first and then leave the stone there for, us for a future sidewalk, but have it ready yeah. to go. Well, I guess my point <laughs> is that there is an answer to your question, and that is that, that Cornell the oh, program, yeah, yeah, the program yeah. that evaluates road surfaces yeah. and you put a I mean, you, you wind up with a score mm -hmm. you know the condition of the road you know 100 is great it's fine is there all so this? there's a list of roads and oh, what they need. Oh, yeah i'm sorry yeah. i'm sorry john yeah, yeah. Every, yeah. every year we do a survey of the roads and then is there a list of sidewalks yeah. 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 That we have that sidewalk against the plan it's yeah. 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 so we yeah. probably ought to start putting together a list of sidewalks or where we want sidewalks to be. Well, that's, that's what this plan will show. Yeah. 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 It, it doesn't that's crowdsource. And who's uh, doing this one, Chuck? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's next Wednesday. Wednesday, I think. Yeah, it's, they have a consultant. Yeah. Uh, and who's putting this together? Sarah. 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 It's, uh, it's, uh, it's the town. Yeah, it's the town. It's to look at the towns where we have sidewalks, where, uh, to try to determine where people it's on sidewalks. Is, I'm saying, is there a committee that's working yes. on it? Yeah. 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 John, yeah. which committee? The sidewalk. The sidewalk at least five. The noon. The 15th Wednesday. Wednesday at noon. Here? Uh, no, it's Yeah, the town hall. Judges chambers. There's, it involves more than just the town. The school, city, school, city, school, the right. Yeah, all the representatives yeah. from a yeah. pretty yeah. large group. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So that's coming. And then we have the list of the roads that maybe you can go and yeah, can distribute or update. update and get ready for our next yeah. meeting a month from now. And we can start talking about what's on the list. Maybe. Probably not the sidewalks. I, I'm on that committee as well. I don't think, are you on that committee? Yeah, I'm on the it takes, I don't think we're no. that close yet. It's, but, it's, yeah. it's, but it's coming. I mean, it's coming. Right. Right. It's going to take off. We're going to hit the water and hit our priorities. Yeah. I think the roads and yeah. try to put together a plan for the next one to three years. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, Jim identified that, that what is it, 284? Yeah, Every year, agreement. roads that we're going to you know, be working on, replacing, fixing, whatever the right term is. Problem is that, well, like last year, you had outlined four or five roads we're going to do work on. Then all of a sudden, we discovered we had a major problem and the uh, white road yeah. had to replace a huge section of that. So those roads we're going to work on, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. They could add it the next year. Yeah, that's the problem we have. Is that we Adding to just kicking a can down the road, right? Yeah. yeah. So now we're into this year, and then the bids just came out from the state, right? And oh uh, yeah, our new asphalt. So, so all the asphalt and aggregate, I don't, everything jumped way up on us. Yeah. So that just means that you know fewer we could do there's less uh, yeah. materials for us yeah. that's, yeah. Like that's, that's, that's between yeah. like, yeah. that's what was you know i was trying to do this year but unfortunately asphalt's already starting at what we paid last year that doesn't include escalation so when the escalation when it gets above 650 ish that's when we start to pay we were over 800 last year we we're paying close to <clears throat> 99 97 a ton so it really um hurts because mm -hmm. now we're not not only now we're not repaving we're also not surface treating roads mm -hmm. that need to be surface treatment prolongs the life obviously right. but if we're not doing the miles we need to do every year it just gets kicked down the road for the next year 
catches up to us. So finding a, an alternate funding mechanism is that's why I mentioned earlier when we were talking about our yeah. you know I I focus yeah. more on Rolla. Okay. Thank thanks, you. Yeah, thanks, Chair. All right, I'll talk to you guys. That somehow we have to so, prioritize absolutely yes. I mean you know yeah. up here yeah. once. But but I'd like to get, that. I'd like to get to the point where we have a list oh, so that, that we could go and share it with everybody and say this is what we're working on and this is the money so we need to work on it. And don't the only issue with doing it that is sharing is that when you start painting yourself into a corner and the nature, why can you do it if it the nature happen. of municipal, yeah, exactly. The nature of municipal work is every spring thought there's a problem that you know yeah. is new and we didn't you know like this one right here yeah, yeah but it's just so it's just be cautious about it. like I, if yeah. you put it out just like yeah. it's not written it's on the switch legs when you start to do something like that then you can start to say well geez you know we have a great need for money and we need to figure out how we're going to go and fund all this and, yeah you know, you know put a strategy together to address it right? Uh, yeah, we don't have 13 million to, to fix the roads. That no, we, we, we never will. That's our annual budget, right? For the total, the, in total, for the town. So you're right. I mean, that you know, I think the reason we haven't done that is just that inertia that exists there. That there is no practical way to yeah. to do that. That's why you know, I you get into a whole lot of other discussions. We don't teach good today, but. You know, unassigned fund balance at the end of the year. I've talked to you know, about taking a piece of that, whatever that number is. I mean, we, we have a set number that we have to maintain, you know, for, uh, as fund balances, you know, restrictive fund balance. And when we anticipate using the following year, anything left over from that maybe could be devoted to this activity in that following year. Mm -hmm. And of course, you, you run the risk of well, some other calamity striking. You wind up having to use it for some immediate, you know, today twelve-inch yeah. line blew up. Yeah, you, you know, that kind of thing. So you're always behind that eight ball. But but still, if we had a policy of doing that, yeah. So whatever is left, we could not cause yeah. another roll. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's what we need to talk about. Because, yeah, infrastructure is roads, infrastructure is oh, culverts, yeah. bridges, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Stories, yeah. they just. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe we are so far behind the eight ball oh, now yeah. that um, we need to put together a plan that figure out figure out how we're going to fund this. Stuff. Right. It's, well, the, the, you, yeah, you can't argue with that at all. But one of the issues we we have also is like this AC pipe ACP pipe thing. We don't know what we don't know. Right. right. And right. it's you know, all the good, good, all the bad, and all the sounds like it's just one. I mean, that's yeah. the same. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I didn't I mean to digress. I no, no, no. Why Jim was here, I wanted to just kind of no, no. get it so out there and talk about the it. Road, the road things are a big deal. Like, I mean, that culvert that was down on Seneca Point Road, I mean, that was a, almost a million and a half. <clears throat> the yeah. good news is that back just in 2017, forward. when we had that heavy rainstorm, the town board formed the drainage advisory committee, and we went through and we looked at all the issues that came up during that storm people mm -hmm. sent it into us we put it on a spreadsheet and fortunately it wasn't that bad spread as far as the number of homes and properties affected and we had that spreadsheet we never took it further than the spreadsheet knowing where the problems are as to how we're going to fix them but there weren't a lot of yeah. real bad ones there so i storm drainage is, built is, is part of this committee also yeah, yeah. and the drains why well, the committee sort of got worked into this and uh, that's part of the reason I sit here. And uh, as I said, the good news is that it didn't seem like there were a lot of major problems as far as stormwater. Now we've got this culvert we're going to talk about, but as far as individual back back of the homes right. in the street, those issues, yeah. uh, it was just a heavy rainstorm, and you're not going to design your systems for those kind of events. Yeah. We did have one advantage, yeah. though, that a lot of the drainage issues revolved around County Road 16, <laughs> the operative board being county. County. So yeah. we were able to say, County, you got a lot of problems with the uh, culvert. And the county, they responded. Yeah, I mean, they came they've to the been part gradually days. replacing the culvert over the past two years mm -hmm. and repaving. You know, they did the south end of, uh, of County Road 16 last year, and they're going to do the upper end 
supposedly this year, but um, we were able to get them come to the meetings and, and be part of the discussion. And that did lead to, you know, some help there. So um, the roads we're talking about really are town roads. I mean, mm -hmm. the counties and we, we plow them, they pay us for that, that eventually it. Yeah. So um, it's going to be us, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. So. Well, well, I apologize for no, that. No, 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 it's good, good discussion. But anyway, well, going back to this now. So okay. the idea is, in summary, to have this teed up and ready to go yep. whenever the need may be there. Much of the last deliverable I owe the town out outside of completing C here is the budget. So and I've been waiting on <clears throat> um, some vendors to give us some pricing. You know, so wrapped into all likes. this will be that if if I mean there's a number of factors that if the if the transfer if the landfill closes. We'll, we'll need a different facility or a, additional things in this facility. I think it was just to figure out what the, the nature of that is. The hard part is understanding what you need to do. Right. So it, it sounds like uh, there's multiple potential futures. Right. Yeah. Right. Consider. But yeah, a lot so of those considerations have been built into this facility mm -hmm. too. So we could get bigger trailers and bigger yeah. trucks. In. Well, the, the, the thing is, we have the rollies and the compactors. So the, the issue would just be is like, um, if you're looking at doing longer, longer trailers, and this building would have to grow substantially in the width, right? Because the trailers um, come in perpendicular to the flow path of traffic. Mm -hmm. So that would be a change, or we'd have to figure out a way to use the conventional rollies with the packers and then transfer from the rolly to a larger um, trailer. You know that that type of thing. We have this is set up for the longer trailers, no problem, because that's C and D and whatever, you know. So, yeah. but this stuff will be that that building, you know, depend upon. So, what, what trailers we're going to put in there, we'd have to kind of try to figure that out. Because, like I said, the, well, and you don't. Well, I don't know. Do you really have to use larger trailers, or do you use smaller trailers? It'd just be more trips, right? But there's a cost. And folks, yeah, yeah, how about that? There's a cost. Where you go? What's yeah. the cost of? Right, ending this versus you know, uh, right? Seems it's like to me bigger is better because man yeah. hours are expensive. We, we, we got the cost of disposing of garbage is going to go. I mean, we've got a small part deal right now. Right, right. And so that's going to go up. So that sort of filters into the. Do we think about a user fee? Right. To charge these people that, that have been getting off. You know, well, not getting off because I mean they're not paying anything currently. And another thing, if we do have a user fee. It would be a card involved, and that would curtail a lot of the freeloaders yeah. that we're getting, where people that come in here and don't live in the town and drop off stuff. So if they if they're registered and have to use a card yeah. to swipe to get to, to dispose of their trash, it's going to eliminate a lot of things. I mm -hmm. I agree with that. I'm I'm not a pay as you go guy, but it yeah. seems that we almost have to look it, at that eventually. Yeah, we'll, yeah. You know, the people. You know, hey, you take my truck and you, you don't have car, you can use my truck over. I got the thing hanging there. So you, yeah, you get rid of that because that guy's car is going to have right. to use money. It's a right. transaction. Well, right. and maybe you do cut down a little bit on the volume. Is you know, the tax. problem is not yeah. just with our, our well, level, but Seneca Meadows is supposed to close too. Right. And they're, I they're mean, huge. That battle's going on over there. Right. Where do you go? I mean, that's going to be. Well, yeah. maybe we need a rail line. You know, I mean, that, who, who knows? I mean, it, there's so many unknowns. <laughs> <laughs> They're sending empty rail cars. All right, fine. Right. Anyway, the new transfer facility is just going to be um, a big, giant hamster wheel. We're going to throw all the garbage yeah. in here, and we're just going to roll it down to the city. <laughs> anyway. Well, it's good. Okay. It's good. Let's move on to road but I do agree the secret on maybe yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 That's that's right. Right. yeah get the secret done and then like I said once we give you the budget let's have those budget numbers then the only other steps the town would do uh would be is to pass a bond authorization um because there has to be a maximum authorization for the project uh you do that you know in the event when you're actually going to start rolling things forward mm -hmm. so greg if if the size of the facility changes based on needs that doesn't modify the secret does it um 
it, it would have to be a certain percentage change. So I mean, like if this well, double, if this double the capacity, be, then yeah, maybe that. yeah, but it's the size of this building. Yeah, it's not right. Affect the seeker. Everything that we're doing in seeker is very general. It's not like we're you know we're building up like, yeah, a four thousand three hundred seventy five right. foot right. Right. and twenty five foot centimeter. You know, it's not one of those things. You know, it's just not an air pollution. Yeah, that, those are all questions you can answer. Or like related to growth size, and right? Sure. And this, I mean, this, this is considerably bigger than what we have. And then the other part is this is set up so that the people um, dropping off waste don't actually have to get out of their car. The town can take the trash and toss it. That way, it's really, again, safety has to be mm -hmm. the drum that we hit the most. I think and this facility would be such that. People pull in, residents pull in, they never get out of their car. Right. They're empty. You go into the bin, you drive out, you go here, you go home, whatever. So we would be eliminating that, eliminating that mm -hmm. potential, you know, for somebody to, you know, have an accident and somebody out here. So something they're going to make it go faster, you know, which actually does work. I mean, I didn't yeah. believe it well, when I saw it. You remember it back here during COVID, we weren't allowed out of our car. So. Yes, they yeah. used to yeah. take a lot of right. yeah. and it moved. That that manpower. The you know, other thing is we have not really involved the city in any discussion of this. And where mm -hmm. are we go with the city? I mean, the city already does pick up, you know, for the residents who you know who came for it. Had that thrilling discussion about the voters the other day after that disastrous meeting on uh, Tuesday evening. Um, I mean, they're how much they would want to be involved here. I don't know. Their their issues, I think, are more with the big items, getting rid of the couch, getting rid of the, right. or something right. like that that goes into the D. That's what they were really after. But when they stopped doing that work, they closed their own facility and you know, they jumped down with us, but they're not clamoring for them. They haven't heard anything from Chad or you know, anybody in the city, so we go home with them right now. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't think we, we already talked about number six, I think. Yeah, it's going to impact our project for this year, no doubt. So, but it's going to depend on what those numbers are. It will wind up shuffling. Yeah, you said the starting index was already at 90 a ton, which, you know, that's, hmm. that's, uh, no, that's, you're in rarefied territory, definitely. Um, last on your agenda. So Auburn Trail. I asked Jim to kind of put this on here just for everyone to kind of see what the plan is. This is the part of the trail that's south from Thomas to Outhouse Park. The area north of this on Brickyard is, I guess, Fisher was handling. Mm -hmm. um, this section, if you can look at this, this uh, more southern end, you can see it where across the park. We have to cross the uh, ice rinks driveway and then come across um, North Street. We're crossing in the city because the county didn't want us to cross on County Road 30. There's guardrail along the. Yeah, and there's guy, yeah, there's guide rail that, that runs all because the um, Sucker Brook kind of cuts across there. Right. So we have that weird little jog and around that's basically to cross in the city and then also to avoid the, the guide rail. Then the trail travels north on the berm that was built as part of the, of the County Road 30 Water Quality Project. And then we're crossing in behind, um, not on the airport property, but on uh, the former German Brothers property. Those easements are acquired. Then we get on that little um, tail of the Potter pro uh, Project which that easement has been drafted and given. And I think the planning board was going to make that a condition of approval to acquire that easement. Mm -hmm. So that one's done. And then, so the next easement that's, that um, is really holding everything up is this little parcel here that's owned by, I think the Stoneville. Which one? Where are you pointing? Right here. Oh, right here. The trees. Yeah. Right. yeah. It, it, well, there's trees, but you know, you can see there's like a, almost a little oh, like yeah, a yeah. trail like that bisects the middle part. So that's, there's a snowmobile trail. So I, you know, I, we can't, I don't want to have our trail coincidental with the snowmobile trail because we don't, on our multi-use trail, we don't allow mechanized equipment, right? So, but I've got it lined up on the side. I've drafted the easement map. What really needs to happen is someone needs to contact this 
homeowner with that draft easement or who are property owners, sorry, not homeowner, because I don't think there's any uh, structure on the site, but whoever the property, just to see if we can get that easement. If we can, then um, I can get uh, the surveyor back out to resurvey the new aligned areas. Um, this is like version like six on our alignments because we've been working with the with the airport and the FAA. You know, originally we we're cutting across the end, and then they're like, "We don't want you here." And then we're like, "Okay, we moved over here." And they're like, "Yeah, we still don't want you there." So we're like, "Okay, I guess we'll move off your property." Um, so uh, it sounds like FAA might be getting closer to authorizing this portion. So I just, if we could get this easement, and then if I know FAA, then we can actually, you know, hopefully get the same to a, a design level where Jim can finally build it. Mm -hmm. Is this a walking trail? It's the multi-use trail, oven trail. Multi-use meaning bicycle. Bicycle, bicycle or pedestrian. Right. And this is the extent of the trail, what I'm looking at now? No, Auburn Trail goes all the way up in like Pittsburgh. Goes, well, it goes from Buffalo to Auburn. Yeah. You, you get on. It's an old railroad bed when you get to Victor and it goes east and west from okay. there. It's it's extensively used in Victor. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. I think the, the trail head, the walking trail starts in Pittsburgh and comes all the way south. So this would connect to the trail at this point? Correct. And at this point? Well, the end point is, that's a house park. house park. So this is it's, the, this would be our beginning, but you can access the trail anywhere along here. Right. Okay. I mean, it's, it's going to be pretty easy to get on. The parking would be an outhouse. So you can access right. the trail here, and then you can get onto the trail down here. Yeah, there's probably going to be other access points. Yeah. Because um, we all, the all Fisher's already... working on the section of Thomas Road North, and then we already, and then... Um, once you get across Jadenko's property, it's already on Town Line Road, and so it goes north through Farmington. So you know where the park is in Victor that's down in there? Right. That yeah, it goes down, park. potentially your park. You know that is? Yeah. That's the Auburn Trail right there. So that's how far you need to go to get to the, to the Auburn Trail. This is just an access to, for yeah. us yeah. to get to the Auburn Trail. Yeah, there was a, there, there, the there was a preliminary study that you were at. Anyway, way yeah, back. Had a laundry <laughs> Oh, so we, ago. yeah, we all had it might even be more, <laughs> more than 10 years ago, but uh, to put the whole thing together, but it was, it was a big effort to, to have this, yeah. yeah, easements and an alignment to work its way down from Victor through Farmington, through Canada, what tie into the city and the town. That, that, that was kind of the, the overall yeah. intent, but the, the, we're getting into the last parts of the segments of the town, Canada will be responsible for. The uh, center point townhouses, they have the trail in front of that brickyard, and then with country, was it Canada was states the uh, Canada and country states yeah. yeah the mobile home park you gotta get around that guy gotta right. get around that guy. that's the I think the and last that gets us right. to Purdy right and then and then we gotta go you across the party and then you go up through the uh, the water easement that you're looking at between mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Farmington and Road yeah, yeah I'm just not, I and just so for everyone's edification I just started working on the demand for Purdy Road but the survey came in. Um, they've got to go back out and pick up some more spots, but we're working on road geometry to build our corridors and stuff like that. So maybe at the next meeting, we'll be able to have a discussion on pretty road extension. No, Farmington got a grant 10 years ago now for the Auburn Road or Auburn Trail, yeah. and uh, Ryan Brand uh, secured that. And you know, we were part of it. We we're Dennis Brewer and I were on the we're representing the town of Canandaigua at the time. Dennis was still a park and rec director at that time. And so we were part of this thing. I think it was Fisher, wasn't it? Fisher, mm -hmm. the coaches that, that did a lot of the design work. And they presented us with uh, like 20 different options to come down through the town of Canandaigua. And after going back and forth with property owners and all the people concerned, you know, this became the most desirable route. The city was involved also because where it ends off here, uh, there is a trail in the park and it's yeah. supposed to tie the um, Buckle Street extension. Right. But the trail it through the city mm -hmm. was so originally going to go across. Yeah, I know. By the other track, park track, 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 yeah. primary oh, yeah. elementary yeah. school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's well, the, this is the peanut line. Yeah. Well, that's the old peanut. You know, this this yeah. right away here was the old peanut line. Yeah. Potter grabbed it because he needed it to do whatever for like 
some zoning requirement. You need a certain amount of acreage to make it work. So they bought this thing. But traveling through the city, it was intended eventually to connect a Ontario pathways to the trail. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, at the south end, south and east of the city. But that route through the city was actually just going to be on city streets because right. people didn't want behind the school. There was, uh, this was years ago. There was a big, I remember, I, I remember these. You would cry that, uh, you know, you had kids going to school and people walking down this trail. We don't All the murders and the rapists will be out there. <laughs> so that portion of it going from the town through the city and making a connection still isn't right. I don't think there's any resolution to that at this point. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think I've not heard Auburn Trail come out of anybody connected right. with the city's mouth yet. I, the end of the day, this is just, um, you know, this is the, the leg that we're responsible for. Um, I think we're now close enough yeah. to, uh, you know, being able to get the preliminary design completed. I just need, I need a, someone to kind of be the shepherd and try to figure out if, if we could potentially get that easement. And so, do we, we know that landowner. I mean, yeah, it's written on Encore. I mean, it's, it's like I said, it's the, the, I drafted the map, so someone just needs to reach out to them. And I don't, I don't know who, I don't know these people. So, the uh, up in front of the townhouses here on Brickyard, the northern end of uh, we had when, when they came in and wanted uh, they were originally going to be single family homes, and they came, they whoever was building came in and wanted to do these townhomes instead. <clears throat> As a condition of uh, granting that change, the town board, uh, well, I asked them to put in you know an eight foot trail there, which they did, but. That had to be replaced, didn't it? Um, I Wasn't think that wide enough now. Well, that's the problem. It's, it's got to be 10 foot. Yeah. And I think, you know, that eight foot trail in spots is probably closer to six. <laughs> and then there's there's gaps because you got to get across right. center point property. Yeah. We can't get, you know, so the trail's not continuous. There's just some, there's some issues with that. I don't know, you know, I don't know where Fisher is with that. I, I you know, I, I've just been really kind of focused on trying to get this alignment. So, you know, I'm looking at it at the standpoint, I'm like, I got, I got two thirds of the easements that I want. I just I got to get the last third, and then we're then we're good to go. And then you know, if surveyor is definitely available, and there's good weather. So this is almost like the quest for the Holy Grail, right? You know, I mean, it's, it's I'm just trying to, I'm trying to cross stuff uh, off of my list. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting longer, right? I just I. <laughs> Oh, we got to get the name of that landowner. Too. Oh, yeah. Anybody well, that yeah. knows that person. The map has it on it. Yeah. So, but it's, I want to say it's owned by the snowmobile. That chunk of woods is? Yeah. Because there's that, that there's a snowmobile trail that cuts across there. And that's the other thing, too, is kind of need to. It goes know, up Airport Road. I need to figure out where that, where that yeah. crosses. Because that, you know, that I don't want to crisscross their trail like four times. So, yeah, I think it, I think it's like somewhere around in here. I know it goes through the middle, but it's not like yeah. somewhere in this area is where that, that yeah. trail is. I just don't know where it goes otherwise. So, but we'll have to make sure we signage a whole bunch of the stuff to make sure the stone builders aren't riding on our trail because we don't want them to come down the burn and stuff like that. This, it'll be stone dust and whatever. If they're on their snowmobiles, if there's not enough snow on the ground, they'll, they'll wreck that. The short story when this was first started, the first couple of meetings, there was some resistance and part of people to seeing this trail. And there's this. Old dude, I, uh, I didn't know his name then, I don't know it now. He came to the meeting, he was a real uh, outdoors type of guy. I mean, he looked at me, good, was that kind of character. And he stood up at one of the meetings and he said, You know, we're going to run out of oil sooner or later. He said, All these roads, they're going to be useless. He said, You're going to wish you had trails to walk on that. So I said, Well, there are no cars on the road. No on the roads. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. Looks good kill. I wouldn't be here now. <laughs> anyway, it's a pretty popular thing. Closer. We'll we'll work on that. I mean, we'll find I somebody on a town Yeah, give it to Doug. He'll yeah. Somebody from Sam. I'll, I'll so know. I'll just what I'll do is I'll take the easement and I'll send it out to the public works group. Yeah. yeah. And then just basically and, ask and somebody. Doug on that. Yeah, yeah. I'll just ask. You know, if someone can kind of if anything out this one do know the person we can. Right, some bad weather. Okay, so that's all I have on on the Auburn Trail. Um, what's not on the agenda, uh, which I think we were prepared to talk about, but Jim's not here. But 
um, North Road, the water main plans are put together. My guy Dave is uh, is coordinated with Jim. Jim has comments, and then so I think we're all set on North Road. But Pete wants to make Pete Inglesby from Farmington wants to make sure Canada was cool with the what we had planned for on North Road. He wants a thumbs up from you guys. That's all. So so we can get going with that. He just sent that the other day. Didn't he? The, the plan yeah, the, um, I think the, the ones. no. Well, yeah, he sent it, but then there were uh, Jim had some revisions. Dave oh. made made the revisions. There's a new email that came out this morning. Oh, okay. so I had a I had a paper set I was gonna take, and that's I was, that, that's, I was texting Dave this morning. I'm like, do I have up to date plans or not? Because it looks like I don't. And he didn't respond, and then he called me before when I got here, and he's like, oh yeah, I got new plans. I'm like, okay, so he's gonna drop a paper set later today. Okay, but it's really just a thumbs up. And then the other part to that Pete Inglesby is looking for is um, County Road Eight. It's to do the design uh, for water main replacement. You know, kind of right, from, kind of right from the south end up to maybe Town Line Road. I might have the I might have the extents wrong. Originally, they wanted to do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Then we came back, and we gave them a budget, mm -hmm. and said, you know, this is what you're looking at. And then they were like, we do like half of that. I'm like, okay, so we revised it. Came back to them, and then they were like, can we do half of that? And I was like, <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, at some point, you know that. Uh, It'd be good to see if there isn't a better strategy of doing these water main replacements. I feel like there's a lot of work to do, and there might be an opportunity to get funding for it if we so took those steps. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, that you yeah, know, you've said that just, the, state, the state changed the uh, the state the, the state up the width of five million, but just realized that they didn't increase the amount of annual funding. So that means there are less projects that are going to get awards. But they did that because I think everyone was complaining about you know all the budgets coming way over, so they, they upped it to five million now. So sixty percent or five million, whichever is the, the lower for the for the WIA awards. There you go. I mean, all these things we're talking about funding. It's always the uh, yeah. It always comes down to the dollar. Right? And the and the WIA grants have got the WIA the WIA grant applications have become very competitive. Wow. Yeah, much more competitive than they were in the first like three years. Yeah. So it's probably uh, the way the number terrible. of them or the quantity or the quality for both. both. So now, like the state's really focused on PFAS, PBOS. That's the you know the forever chemical, well, right? Yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not just that. I don't know if you want to to it than that. Yeah, uh, PFAS was was used to line any of your microwave popcorn. That's all PFAS. That's how you get paper to not, you know, soak up oil. You use the PFAS. Mm -hmm. So it was everywhere. Um, anyhow, long and short of it, um, there is a greater emphasis on uh, uh, trying to deal with those projects. I think downstate, there's been a problem with like one for dioxane and PFAS, PFAS on the eastern side of the state. So unfortunately, Albany and the Hudson Valley is probably getting more of this money. You know, then we'll we'll be able to get to, but you got to be in it to win it. So oh, yeah, but yeah, definitely not going to get a penny if you don't get in. Right, yeah, you got to you got to participate. Right, Absolutely. so that would be you know the strategy I would have for the for the town. I've talked with Jim yeah. and Terry, kind of same thing. We all when we get done with the electro scan, the the step would be is put it into a PER and then start looking for funding. So I think that's. Uh, everything the grant went in for the culvert down Seneca Point. Like I said that was about a million and a half, I think, was the total project cost. Well, I think the state pays for 90% of that project. Boy, that would be nice. Yeah, how long is it? 120 feet here. Okay. It's yes, yeah, well, the existing culvert is about 120 feet long, and the replacement culvert would need to be about 140 feet long. But Jim's got 400,000. We not, might not be on the other for that. This is what Sunny Point Road, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we might not be in the, on the hook for that total, total 400. Is that what you're saying? No, no, the total cost was was, was north of 1.5. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know you said 90%. They fund 90%. Yeah. I think, but I think there is a cap too. Oh, so. okay. yeah. It's, yeah. So we're still yeah. 400,000. That was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's yeah. going away. Well, that's just does, or that's a second call, but that's got to be done. There's two calls on seven on the road. Mm -hmm. So I was there for the other one, but it was not my design. 
that's I just want to make sure everyone knows it was not my design. That was one of those. Hey, so, look at this. I was like, oh wow, look at that. So you have these surface tree design. Are you is that chip sealing or is it that other? There's a various either the chip sealing and micro painting or um you know, chip. What are you looking at? Oh, oh I just printed out the tweet for well, I mean, this is what yeah. you guys signed in January. Yeah, the upper part of the, the um of any road um that top is basically your wearing course. Oh no, I'm aware of that yeah. I'm, a, I'm a cyclist. Oh, okay, so perfect. what you put on the road is a huge oh, yeah, yeah, whether yeah. you're gonna ride right. that yeah. road for a and, whole year and right. where the conservations are, right? Right. Yeah. right. I don't mind those because I can usually miss those, but yeah. well, but chips are like terrible for Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I've used micro pay for years. The problem is, it's like it's, it's expensive, it's expensive yeah. now, and, we, and I cannot maintain center line miles. We have to mm -hmm. keep treated with micro pay. So, I mean, so the, just, so the country roads that you know, because that creates a lot of dust too. I mean, people are yeah, they're swashed on, yeah, it's not dusty usually. So, unless it's stones dirty, dirty, yeah. So, if your stone is dirty, then you should be putting it on the road, anyways. Yeah, because it's not gonna stick. Seems like the city must use dirty stone, then, because uh, they, I mean, there's the fog, yeah, they get it all day, yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, no, I'm just saying, well, that is true. So then, like, I don't typically like to use a chip seal on a low volume road because they will just tear it off and plow the car mm -hmm. lines. Right. So I use a micro paint on it, mm -hmm. or I use a one eighth stone mm -hmm. that's smaller than three eighths, so I don't pull pull the stone off yeah. the road. Um, but you know, we're I'm conscious of areas that have bicyclists and that sort of thing. Like I would never use chip seal on a subdivision. It's just yeah, yeah. Already, you know, that's yeah. just for kids who couldn't buy it. Well, yeah. it just goes, it gets pushed to the gutter that goes down the pipes, yeah, and lays there. So but if I can use it like I uh, did silver uh sand hill road, and you know, we do that on this big thing. Yeah, you get some bites of splits really because the farmer you know, and this heavy but it goes up and right. all the time. So yeah. And then wherever I can put it. Or I see it's practical. Yeah. Okay. It's gonna affect well, you see what's number. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can I understand. I get it's cheap. It's just it's, yeah, it's, it's, you get it's those most, miles I, of those it's good. They get pretty deep. Yeah, they, yeah. well, we let it run well, yeah, when you're running up with your uh yeah, so that super thin tire, you just have to do it somewhere else, right? And that's the other problem too, like I was using if whoever's run the spreader. Hopefully, it's putting down the application correctly because when you have that much stone, that means you didn't do it right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Same with oil. You see it start to creep through, and it means, oh, we're applying. Right. It should have been, should have been, instead of five tenths, it should have been like 3.9 tenths per gallon. And then that way, there, it doesn't seep up around the stone. Right. So, but again, that's people always have questions about that too. As soon as you have hits, yeah. people will start complaining right away. Right. Well, those operators who have done it for 30 years don't have there it. yeah and then yeah. you have a new operator who doesn't have the experience you know he's still learning yeah or she's still learning yeah. just one of those things so maybe so maybe we, uh, we need to do maybe it would be worthwhile to do like a little in one of the future newsletters to just outline the different surface treatments and why we use them yeah so the public, you know maybe that I, i'm just saying well i think that's a great idea the people in the the monthly news news yeah, just for fire. I don't know, you know, and then people have questions down the road. You just point them to the and, you know that people will ask stuff. you why are we even doing this, and right. then they don't understand that it extends the life. It, it's a money savings. Over it is. The time. It's usually crazy to me, like as an engineer, to work with highway superintendents in the details of their job. It always kind of, I guess, it's just. It's different for me because like everything I deal with is a lot of theoretical, a lot of you know math. So practical. But these guys you get know, they, they get they, this. Yeah, it's it's you know it's everything real. It's on the ground. And, yeah. But there's it's very it's so complex for what they do. I'm like you know when a new super, highway superintendents, man, they they are so far behind the curve. Yeah, I was lucky to have guys with experience. Um. Yeah, I mean, for years we used crushed gravel and it was dirt. Right. So the sucked yeah I mean, it was cheap right so. no i yeah i remember actually having some of the conversation like are you sure you want to use that <laughs> there's a lot to these uh these traps and there's a lot that really goes on 
behind the scenes, you know, yeah, a lot of people absolutely. just aren't aware of. They just see the the finished product, maybe, or the you know the the issue that's out there. You don't really have any feeling, and, and or should they have really? Right, 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 right,